transfer report has been a hot topic of conversation in this fan base the last couple weeks. You know, they've got beaten by Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, Trey Sermon, you know, the last two years in the playoffs, all guys that were transfers. And Dabo Sweeney's been adamant about, you know, not wanting to dip into that transfer portal. He likes developing high school guys and recruiting guys out of high school and develop them. Part of his sales pitch, I think, is selling those kids on the fact that he's not going to just go out and actively recruit the transfer portal for guys to just come in and take their spot. So it's been a hot topic of conversation in the fan base here of late. He he did say back on early signing day that he would he reserves the right to change his stance on that in the future if he needs to, and that he could see himself using it to fill some needs, or if he had somebody leave unexpectedly. But um, as far as guys entering the transfer portal, so far so good on that front. That don't mean it's going to remain that way. Like I said, there's a lot of guys coming back, so that could mean some of these young guys might look for playing time elsewhere. You you never know these days. So this is what I'm looking at, uh, Jason. We got, of course, uh, the five-star Demarcus Bowman going to Florida from Clemson, the running back. You got along the defensive line Jordan Williams, who left Clemson to go to Virginia Tech, and Niles Pinckney going to Minnesota along the D-line as well from Clemson. So nothing that's that much of a surprise or a big loss there. Of course, Bowman's a, a huge prospect, but he hasn't done anything at this level yet. Yeah, Bowman's a huge loss, you know. I, he transferred way earlier in the season, but that, that's a big hit. He might be the most talented running back Dabo Sweeney ever signed. I mean, you don't lose a player like that and it doesn't hurt, it, you know, not feel it. They were planning on him being there next year and being a big part of the offense. I, I do like the two guys they brought in in the 2020 recruiting class, but neither one of them are, are the talent that Bowman was. As um, far as Pinckney and, and Jordan Williams, both fifth-year seniors taking advantage of that sixth year from the NCAA, um, I, I just think with them it's, it's a matter of wanting to go somewhere and get more playing time, you know. I think Clemson's going to be about six deep on the interior of the defensive line next year, and if those guys wanted to see more time on the field, they, they needed to go elsewhere. Talking Clemson football here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Smash that like button, share these videos out on social media. So if you enjoy the videos, then I got to think that other people will as well. If they follow you on Twitter or are connected to you on a Facebook, they probably don't know we're here talking college football every day. So please let them know by sharing the videos and of course, subscribe. All right. On the coaching staff, you're letting us know that not necessarily guys leaving or coming, uh, but a bit of a shuffle to try to accomplish what? So I'm interested to hear about this. Well, Tony Elliott, you know, the offensive coordinator, he's been the running back coach for Dabo Sweeney for years. He, he's now going to coach tight ends and remain the offensive coordinator. Danny Pierman, who has been the tight ends coach and special teams coordinator, is going to move into an off-the-field role of some kind. He's going to do self-scouting and – scout the transfer portal supposedly and um cj spiller is the new running backs coach so i mean i think i think that's a good move you know that that's you, that gives you a guy uh, he's going into the college football hall of fame a former first round pick out on the road recruiting these running backs whenever they can get back out on the road anyways but i mean i i think cj spiller is going to be a home run hire for this staff i mean i I think he can knock it out the park on the recruiting trail. And, and he's one of the guys that helped mold Travis Etienne, despite the fact he wasn't officially on the staff. So your former tight ends coach is going to scout the transfer portal that you're not going to use. That, that, that's, <laughs> that's what it, that's the word. He, he is self scouting and scouting the transfer portal. Supposedly. I, I, I don't know really what he's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> It, but he's been there for years. I, I, they'll find him something to do. I had no doubt about that. All right. We're talking Clemson football with Jason Priester. Join his work there at allclemson.com on SI. Another great haul in the 2021 class, uh, National Signing Day, the second version, the one that used to be the traditional one, is, of course, the first uh, Wednesday of February. So is there anybody else out there? Anything else that you expect to happen in? Uh, coming up in a couple of weeks 
No, I think Clemson's done. I'd be surprised if they signed anybody else. I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't happen, but it would surprise me. Um, they did add Tristan Lee here a couple weeks back. You know, he, he signed on early signing day, but kept it secret until his announcement on the day of the All-American Bowl, a five-star offensive lineman. Um, and with, with, with Jackson Carmen moving on to the NFL, he, he's got a chance to um, break the two deep next year. He's that good. He had a chance to look at 2022 at all. Not a whole lot, you know, and, and Clemson's they, – they they recruit slow anyways and without having – the way recruiting is with this dead period, they're, they're slow – they're really slow playing a lot of guys. Like, for example, at quarterback, I think they've offered two quarterbacks in the whole class so far. Um, I know Ty Simpson's one, and Braden Davis is the other one. So, I mean, I they've signed – I think they've got three commitments for the 22 class – I know two of them are offensive linemen. I forget off the top of my head what the other one was. but Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm I, looking at here, Jason. I'm looking at uh, Colin Sadler. He's an offensive tackle out of Greenville. Then you got uh, Adam Randall, Myrtle Beach. Yeah, the wide receiver. And Blake Miller, the offensive lineman. Blake Miller. Yeah. Still good enough to be 12th in the nation, number two in the ACC. And, of course, those numbers mean absolutely nothing at this yeah. point. Those are two good offensive linemen they got commitments from, two two really good ones. I, I like both of those guys. Good takes for the Tigers there. Yeah, the offensive line, would you think that that would be the major disappointment from this past season? Absolutely, no doubt about it. it, it you know, Jabbo Sweeney raved about this offensive line coming out of camp, you know, hyped them up to maybe be the best he's had yet. and they just were not that especially in the run blocking game the interior to run, you know interior of that line was just not very good running the ball um they got some work to do in that area and, and they do have they do have an influx of talent coming you know i mean they've started to really recruit well along the offensive line in the last two or three recruiting cycles and i think we're fixing to start seeing the results of that on the field starting next year yeah, Travis Etienne, of course, a guy that uh, had, coming into this past season, the highest average yards per carry uh, figure in the history of college football for a guy that carried the ball as much as he did, over eight yards per carry. And I haven't looked at the numbers to see what it was this year, but it wasn't anything close to that. Might not he, have been it, five. He was down, He was down. I want to say, over two yards per carry this year compared to what he was last year. Yeah, it... Yeah. it he just had no room to run all season long. They had to they had to get creative in ways of getting him the ball, get it to him out on the outside and in the passing game. And he just had nowhere to run. From seven point eight to five point four. Yeah, I, I thought it was over two yards. I mean, you and it wasn't against, here. it wasn't against elite defenses that was shutting this running game down either. I mean, we talking about Syracuse, one of the worst run defenses in the country. I know they were when they played anyways, and they just shut Clemson's running game down. I mean, that that's a team you got to line it up and run the ball down their throat. And Clemson just could not do that this year. Good stuff from Jason Priester. Uh, join him on allclemson.com, covering the Tigers, of course, throughout the offseason here as we get set for 2021. And, of course, an opener against Georgia. I got to think the Clemson fans are hyped up about that already. Yeah, that, that's going to be a big game, man. Hopefully, hopefully by, you know, the end of August, 1st September next year, when college football season rolls back around, things are open back up and we can start filling these stadiums again because that, that, that's going to be a big game. And it, it's going to be sad if you can't pack that, have a full house on hand when they play, man, because there, there's no there's no other. I mean, that would be one of the best atmospheres in the country all of next season. Jason, you know, we appreciate you stopping by. Anytime, man. Thanks, Mark.